Hey everybody, welcome to Fisher's first ever virtual race night. Uh, thanks to Ski Racing Media for having us. My name is Brian Landrigan. I'm the U.S. Marketing Manager for Fisher Sports here at our office in New Hampshire, uh, coming to you live through Facebook. I'm joined by Rush Hawkins and Mike Hattrick from Sun Valley. What's going on, guys? Hey, Brian. How are you? I'm doing great. You're um, awesome. Stoked to see you guys. How's, uh, how's it going out in Sun Valley? Yeah, uh, Mike and I are sitting here in Ketchum. There's a race night going on a few blocks away, and we're getting pretty fired up after that video. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, ski season is coming. We are stoked. Um, so uh, let it, tell us a little bit about what, what you guys do at Fisher. So I'm Rush Hawkins. I am the national competition manager and sales manager for UVEX and Fisher. And, uh, yeah, I try to make dreams happen, making skis get to the athletes that need it. All the coaches, athletes, everybody's getting taken care of, as well as clubs, universities, you name it. Mike? And I'm the, uh, I'm the U.S. product manager and, uh, and content director, so... I work with the Austrians to, to put together product lines, uh, specifically the Ranger collection. So if anybody's got any questions on any of that, I'd love to help out and answer. Awesome. So um, the video obviously is live on Ski Racing Media's pages. In the comment section down below, you can ask us any questions. Um, we've got a show here, including some of our athletes and our product managers. Um, so hang tight till the end. We'll get to your questions, uh, but feel free to throw those questions in at any time down in the comments section. And in about 20, 25 minutes, we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, so we're going to kick it off with a quick intro from Rush, and we'll see you guys here in a second. Hello, uh, I'm Rush Hawkins. I'm the National Competition Manager for Fisher and National Sales Manager for UVEX. I live in Park City, Utah. Just one exit, just a stone's throw from the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Team Center of Excellence. This evening, I'd like to give you a quick summary of the foundations of Fisher, and then dive into why we're all here, how to virtually fit race product with our fit matrix. We'll also be hearing from Fisher's race product manager and all product manager from Austria, as well as a handful of our current and ex-World Cup athletes. We hope you find this fun and informative. Fisher is an Austrian brand, born in the mecca of ski racing. Founded in 1924, it remains one of the last major family-owned ski brands. When you strap on that yellow and black race gear, it shouldn't be taken lightly. You should know you're representing a brand born from race. We like to say skiing is not a lifestyle, it's a life. So please feel free to use hashtag live to ski and hashtag fisher ski in your social media posts. We are here to help support you with the best race gear possible to achieve your dreams. Whether that dream is to make World Junior ski in college or become a World Cup slash Olympic champion, Fisher has your back. We're excited to announce some fast, fun, new product this year for the race community to sink their teeth into for the 2021 season. With the help of Tyler Thies, Gerard Reeder, Forrest Peterson, Steve Nyman, and Sam Morris will be presenting what we think is the most important info about Fisher and what you need to know before you get geared up for what is hopefully your most successful race season. Good luck, stay safe, and have fun. Awesome. Thanks, Rush. Now we're going to kick it off with Gerhard Reeder talking about our new MO plate. Okay. Um, hello, guys. My name is Gerhard Reeder. I'm the international product manager um, sitting here. Uh, at the Fisher headquarter read and I'm happy to and I'm very pleased uh, to to give you an update about our latest uh, racing products um, the most interesting thing uh, when it comes to our racing skis is the new MO plate um, we started with this development two years ago um, and the uh, Daniel Yul was the first racer in World Cup who was on, on this MO plate. And we figured out really a couple of interesting things where, where we thought, okay, this would be great to bring this uh, technology in a good way down uh, to, our, uh, to our racing and also to our junior racing products. Um, the most important thing on this new MO plate is um, the, the floating toe piece. Uh, if you have a closer look on, on, on our plate, you see um, at the toe a yellow piece, which is floating, meaning 
this piece uh, holds uh, the binding toe. And in the same way, it, uh, this floating toe piece reduces the, the, the effective length uh, of, of the system uh, plate uh, binding boots. What is the benefit out of it? Uh, the benefit is that you have really uh, a short system and you don't influence the natural behavior of the ski. So meaning the, the natural flex uh, properties of the skis are less influenced if you have a longer system. So this is uh, one of the most important things here. And uh, in addition to this, if you have also a closer look how we have mounted this plate on our different racing skis, meaning GS and Zalom, you will figure out that uh, we have um, two different uh, options to mount this plate, uh, which influences the behavior. If we have a look on the slalom skis, we have um, a mounting system. We have um, four uh, holes where we can mount the plate. So when I'm talking from uh, tip to tail for slalom, for example, we have uh, um, a free, a free uh, a screws in front and the second section is also free. Then um, the fixed mounting of the plate where it cannot move is at uh, the heel part. And then the, the latest section is again free. What is here the benefit? Uh, here you have really uh, a nice ski with, uh, uh, with more flexibility compared to our GS skis where the fixed part, uh, the fixed screws, uh, of, of the plate are more in front of, uh, of the plate. If you screw um, the, 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 or if you fix the plate more in front, the ski will be more direct and uh, have uh, yeah, a, better, a better turn initiation, which is good for, for, for GS. So, um, I would like to invite you uh, to, to figure out which setup is best for you because you have the possibility to remove uh, the fixed screw in every position you want. So figure out what is best for you, what is uh, best for your type of skiing and what is best uh, uh, for, for your setup. So this is uh, what I can say about the new plate and I hope uh, you enjoy our new racing stuff. Thank you. Thanks to Gerhard for the explanation on the MO plate. As we mentioned, we'll be here to answer questions at the end. So if you do have any questions on the new MO plate, feel free to type those questions into the comment section and we'll get to them here at the end. Um, next, we're gonna kick it over to Tyler Thies, our Western competition rep, who's gonna be talking about our new size matrix. Hey guys, Tyler Thies here with Fisher Skis. To help pick skis for an athlete, we have made a size recommendation matrix. Based off of age and weight, we have recommended GS and slalom ski sizes, binding recommendations, and boot, model, and flex. Basic rule of thumb is chin and nose height. For slalom, 15 to 20 centimeters above that for GS based off ability. These are recommendations, so we recommend you talk to your coach in your local race shop. Also, make sure you abide by all uses say this in high school rules. Now, to talk more in detail about the race product, we have some of our World Cup athletes. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, we'll kick it off to the athletes now. First up is Forrest Peterson. Hi, my name is Forrest Peterson. I am from Berkeley, California. I've been a ski racer pretty much my whole life. I just retired this last season. I was on the US ski team for four years. I then went on to race for Dartmouth College and the last two years, I raced for the independent team, Team X Alpine. I raced in um, three World Cups and won a Norm event in Slalom, GS, and Parallel Slalom. Um, so tonight, I'm here to talk to you about the Fisher Tech Skis, because those were the events that I focused on while, while I was a racer. And really what I can, I can say is just that um, the Fisher skis are the perfect combination of power and stability. Um, there's truly no better feeling than rolling the ski up and 
having it give you so much feedback and um, and you truly feel it um, accelerate underneath you. Uh, it's, it's one of the best feelings in the world. And then um, for me personally, I think what really distinguishes Fisher from other ski brands is its unparalleled um, stability. Um, I found that, you know, there have been so many times I've been out of balance or not in the most ideal position going into a turn. And the Fisher ski holds like no other. Um, you can always count on it to hold your line and, and really just be there, even if you're not in the best position. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I've found uh, that Fisher, you know, how it distinguishes distinguishes itself from other ski brands. Um, and that's, yeah, those are really the main reasons I've been on Fisher my whole life as a ski racer. Um, they've always, they've had my back and literally and figuratively. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess the last thing is just that they're, they're so much fun to ski on. They really uh, make a slalom and giant slalom turn so much fun to ski and, and it's a pure joy to ski on Fisher skis. All right, thanks, Forrest. Next, we're gonna kick it over to Steven Nyman, who's gonna tell us about um, the speed skis and how he helped out with the development. Here we go, Steven. Hello, children of American ski racing. Check it out. The leaves are changing. That means winter is coming. The snow will fly soon. And you're gonna get some new skis and hopefully they're Fisher because I designed a lot of the speed skis and uh, the basis of all the speed skis came from several years ago. I had won on the World Cup and I was just in some dark times and I, was, I knew I could win. I knew I was good. My body felt great and I was just like, what's going on? And I basically took all the splits and I looked at where I was losing my time throughout the entire World Cup and we saw the averages of certain areas and saw that it, it basically was on a lot of side hills and I would lose a lot of mount, a lot of, a lot of time on side hills. And so I looked at the ski and looked at why we were, we were wondering what the deal was. And then we figured out our tip was really wide and we wanted to change that and, and create a skinnier tip. And then, um, that, changed into something that would glide better. And, and, and we, we created a bunch of different models and figured out what worked best, what we felt the most comfortable on. And, uh, and now the basis of that is what's morphed into today's skis. And um, Super G and Downhill uh, are, are fantastic right now. I get on them, I feel comfortable. Um, we have several different models coming out testing if you're east coast i'm telling you fisher is the ticket these skis are so good on ice and bumpy gnarly stuff um and we're testing several different models that will work on softer easier snow uh for west coast skiers so um what i do say is learn about your skis, learn about the models, learn how they're designed. There's a specific reason behind each of these skis. Um, yes, they may be fast, but they may perform in certain scenarios better than other scenarios. So be aware, be aware of what you're doing. Um, reach out to athletes, talk to me and Bryce, Sam Morse, ask about the models you have, see, see what they are about, see what the grind's about, see if we can guide you in the right direction and you can know when to pull those skis out of your quiver and and use them and win. Um, I, I really think Fisher's a dedicated company to ski racing. They are a ski racing, ski brand. Um, they've, they've invested in it, they're committed. Um, that's, that's what they do. You are going to get the highest quality material by getting Fisher skis. They're handmade. They're not five tiers down, made in some factory off in the middle of nowhere, China, Ukraine, Russia. 
these are legit made in Austria um, you're gonna get some top tier stuff uh, speed skis I'm excited about this year and I hope you guys are too and I hope I was helpful and good luck see you this winter on the hill wear your mask thanks Steven uh, last but not least we got Sam Moore series gonna tell us a little bit about his career on Fisher and Uvex and we'll be back to answer questions right after that so make sure you're adding your questions to the comment section down below and here's Sam Hey there, ski racing community. My name is Sam Morse. I'm a seven year member of the US ski team and World Cup downhiller. I'm here to talk to you about some of my favorite things about both Fisher uh, and Uvex. I've been skiing on Fisher for my entire career. Uh, they make some of the burliest skis on the market, always ready for gnarly, steep, icy downhills. Um, and that's what I love doing. So they're perfect for the job. Uvex makes some of the best lenses that I've seen on the market. Uh, they have developed some really, really good low light lenses, which is a lot of what we ski on the World Cup. Uh, shadowy, December, Bormio, it's dark, it's bumpy, um, and I count on my Uvex lenses uh, to show me the way down the course. Another thing I wanna add about Fisher is their boots. They manufacture really high quality ski boots. Each time I know I'm getting what I ask for. Um, there's not a whole lot of variance pair to pair, which you often can see with other brands. I've been really happy with how they ski on these bigger World Cup tracks. So Fisher's definitely a brand that I have loved, adored, uh, skied on it for my entire career, and hope that you guys see value in it too. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks, Sam. Uh, I'm gonna bring in the rest of the Fisher crew. Welcome back, Rush and Mike. Hey guys, Tyler Thies. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that Uvex logo over Mike's face real quick. <laughs> and <laughs> here's the gang. Strategically placed. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun hearing from the athletes. Yeah, that was great. So we got a couple questions here. Let's kick it off with uh, this first one from Dan Payne. He says, I live in Northern Michigan and race weekly in a beer league. I'm ready for a ski upgrade and would like a possible recommendation on which Fisher ski to consider. He's 47, 6'6", 197 pounds, and skied for 40 years. Well, I guess I could address that with another question and ask what radius he's looking for. If it's a beer league ski, this uh, <laughs> RC4CT right here is an extremely strong beer league ski. That would be a really fun one. Or we have a GS Masters and a couple different sizes to look at as well. The, the cool thing about the CT is it was designed for the dual slaloms and World Cup. So it's got it's built like a GS ski, but it's got a much deeper side cut. So um, for I think in terms of all the race skis, it's got the most versatility in terms of turn shape. Uh, one last thing to note on there. It also comes with the new MO plate. Yep. Yep. Um, so continue to ask us some questions, guys. Um, anything that you, Rosh, Tyler, Mike, would like to add in um, based on what the athlete said? Tyler, got anything? Um, no, just basically uh, Fisher is, you know, born and raised, so that's their big focus. Uh, know that when you're getting a Fisher ski, it's with the best quality. Yeah, um, a lot of people don't know it, but Fisher is still owned by the Fisher family. We're the last independently owned ski brand um, from Austria. Um, we're really proud of our heritage. Um, we've got our own factory uh, right behind our office in Reed. So we have a lot of control from the development process to the manufacturing process. And, and here in the U.S., we're also owned by the Fisher company, too. So it's really a, a single source supplier. So we have, really have a lot of control over our quality and, and what goes into the skis. That's a, another great note to make about Uvex as well. They're actually made in Germany. It's the highest top quality lenses, helmets made in Germany. Yep, yep. Uvex is known for safety. And when doctors need vision, they wear their safety goggles in the operating room. And, you know, it can get hot, cold, temperatures change quickly there. And for surgeons especially, it's very important to keep those lenses clear and have them not fog up. And, and they've brought that same technology into the ski goggles as well. Excellent thing to note. Yeah. Um, so we got a question from Christian Eaton here. He asks, uh, I'm only 5'5 five five and skiing with fist regulations. What can I do in my tune or mounting to help initiate turns and get ahead of my 193 GS skis? 
I'm going to put that on Tyler. He probably knows the most about this one now. Yeah, so uh, talking about the, the ML plate, uh, it's really sweet that you can play around with those screws. So you can move them up more towards the front so you can really be able to initiate that turn. So it's easier to turn, especially for someone who's just 5'5". Five five. You can turn them up and lay some arcs down. <laughs> and that's the, the blocks that uh, Gerhard was talking about right here. They can be moved back here. The options are kind of endless, and you kind of figure out what works for you. And that's how that ammo plate's going to benefit you. There you go. We got here on the slalom ski as well. Bevel on the shovel in the very tip. <laughs> yeah. For, for Christian, I would probably bevel the tip down a little bit for him, too. Give him a little <laughs> 0.75 in the tip so he can just make it that much easier. <laughs> Maybe get a initiate. little stivet first. <laughs> Yeah, two under foot will be a little easier to grab, yeah. and then tip will be a little more forgiving. Um, got another question here from Parker Gray. Can you guys give a short description on what's new with the plate, specifically what's better? Well, that's the, the floating toe piece is really the, the thing to remark about. And that goes for both events, but mostly in GS, it makes for a smoother initiation. And for slalom, when they move the, the uh, blocks up, it really snaps a turn off a lot quicker. So the initiation is a lot quicker. Whereas in GS, you want a little more mellow uh, initiation. So that's where that helps. Yeah, and can you, Tyler, can you tell us a little bit more about how you can move the screws around in this plate and really dial in the flex and the feel of the ski? Uh, yeah, so like, as you can see on the plate, um, there's screws, but it's, you know, a single spot. So it's not throughout the whole plate. So it allows it to really flex really naturally. But also, uh, for slalom, uh, you want to play around maybe having the screws maybe in the front. And that'll help initiate, really be more aggressive for that skier who needs a little more uh, response out of their ski and don't want it to be so, uh, I don't know, delayed in their response. So having moving those screws around, you'll be able to switch it up and really play around with how the ski reacts to your skiing. So you can really customize this plate, is what you're saying? Yeah. That's awesome. Su super easy by just moving a couple screws around. Thank you. Um, we've got another question from Christian. I'm glad he asked it um, about the boots. So uh, what can you tell me about canting the boots and features for customizing the boot? And I've got the uh, Podium RD130 boot here with me. So that has full cuff canting abilities from Actually, Lando, can you? Yep. Yeah. So it has it on each side and on the back as well. Tyler can probably speak more to the ones in the back. Yeah, so um, there's different degrees based on where your knee lines up with your boot. And uh, if you get on a canting board with your local race shop or even with your coach, uh, they can see where your knee aligns when you just stand there naturally in the boot. And you can play around with the back. Uh, it can move in and out. The cuff, you can kind of twist the cuff, and also on the side, that helps with it too. So it's a very versatile boot. You can adapt to a lot of different people's uh, stance and their position standing. And, and we, we should be clear about the difference between canting and cuff alignment too. All the things we're talking about are cuff alignment so that your your leg matches with the shell. But if, if you need canting, that's planing the sole, depending on how, how you stand and whether yeah. you're knock kneed or bow legged. Now, definitely uh, recommend uh, reaching out to your coach and to your local race shop to really dial it in. So let's take a closer look at the UVEX helmets. Rosh, I got the Jack Plus helmet here. Um, what can you tell us about the Jack? Uh, that is our soft eared helmet. We yeah. have a small and bar for that as well, a la carte. That thing's a lightweight, awesome helmet that you can also wear a free ride. It's awesome. Yeah, thing's super lightweight. Got a micro adjuster in the back here, really dial in that fit. Um, yeah, so a great helmet. And then for um, Speed Events GS, we have our, uh, this is the downhill, carbon um, UVEX helmet, and we have the non-carbon version as well. Uh, if anybody has any specific questions on the UVEX helmets, uh, feel free to ask them below. And you can also find this information on the virtual race night page. And everything we've referred back to will be found on Ski Racing Media's virtual race night page. 
Um, so check that out at skiracing.com. We'll have Tyler's size matrix up there. Um, we'll have a link to our race form. Um, how our race form works is a little bit differently. So you'll fill out a questionnaire and then we'll reply to you in two to three business days with the closest retailer or what the next best steps are for you to purchase your Fisher or UVX gear. Um, leave a couple more minutes here open for questions. Um, I'm not seeing any new ones come across. If there's any final things that you guys want to say, uh, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap up this great first virtual race night. Yeah, I think this one was a lot of fun. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. I think it's going to be continuing um, monologue. I think we're going to be listening and seeing your responses, your questions, and we'll be able to reply as well. And I would say also that, you know, sometimes races get canceled because it snows too much. So don't forget about your <laughs> right. ranger or right. ski. <laughs> yeah, Mike, uh, you were really involved with the development of the ranger skis. Uh, what can you tell us about the new uh, ranger FR series and then the redesigned ranger TI skis? Well, what, what we did is took the collection and really separated it into two different groups. Um, as you mentioned, the, the FR group here and then the TI. And, and, and the FR group is really for, for skiers that, that are maybe a little bit more progressive in their, in, their, in their skiing and are looking for something that's a little bit more playful. Maybe they drift turns as much as they carve. Um, and then the TI group has more metal in it. So I would say that's somebody who favors maybe a little bit more technical, um, has a technical background or a technical style of skiing that maybe controls speed more through turn shape um, and is more focused on carving. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of intentional overlap in these groups. Um, some of you will go from the description, you go, oh yeah, I'm definitely an FR or maybe no question, I'm a, I'm a TI skier. But if, if you're not sure which you are, you probably have a foot in each camp. And in that case, you really can't go wrong. So choose a graphic you like best. <laughs> Yeah, what I've always been really impressed with with the Fisher Freeride skis is they really do turn like race skis. You can send these skis as fast as you want and, and they're going to turn and be responsive for you. Really not a watered down ski experience. Um, and then you get all the versatility to jump in the trees, ski powder, um, ski on the softer days. Really been impressed with the Ranger line of skis. Um, yeah, we had a question from Heidi. You might have just answered it, Mike, but we'll check it out. Uh, she says she's an advanced skier, mostly West Coast Jeep Pal. I uh, have an all terrain with an 88 waist and 170 length. Curious about moving to the Rangers. Um, what would you suggest? Um, so she asked about a waist at 108. We have the Ranger 107 Ti. Uh, what length would you suggest for someone 5'3, 140 pounds, Mike? Uh, and, and, at that weight, in the 107. The shortest, I think, is a 175. Yeah. Four, I was going to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what length did she say she was skiing on? Um, she said 70. 70, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, then, then that's definitely the way you'd want to go. For a ski that's that wide, you're not a little bit of extra length, I think, is helpful, anyways, because when when the when you're skiing in that kind of broken up snow the, you're playing a big four aft balance game so having a ski with a little bit more length is fine because you're not looking for a super quick ski anyways if you're in in softer deeper snow so i think that's 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 where she'd want to go it's the shortest length available in that 107 width um another question from christian he man he is a fisher super fan um, he's hoping to get a ski for days when he's not training. His friends do a lot of touring and he lives on the uh, East Coast. Nice. What ski would you recommend that he could use uh, for both the resort and for touring? He really wants one setup for both. Yeah, if he's looking for something for both, I mean, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Um, again, figure out whether, Christian, you're, a, you're more a TI minded skier or an FR minded skier. A lot of people are putting a binding like a marker PT or a shift on a, on a, on a ski like this, which is 102 underfoot. That way it's, it's, uh, it, it's wide enough to float in soft stuff. And it's, uh, it's uh, still narrow enough that on all, but the most bulletproof Eastern days, you're going to get a good edge on that. 
Yeah, that's a great setup. I used the 94, but, you know, similar philosophy there. And Yeah, and, and again, yeah. you got to figure out how you want, if you want to lean towards the, 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 the firmer snow or softer snow. Yeah, but I like what you brought up with the versatility there. Those skis are going to perform really well downhill and, and still be light on the uphill. They're not going to really bog you down on the uphill at all. No, you're not going to break any ascent records, but it, it's more it's more the mindset of I want a high performance touring setup, and I'm okay if I'm going a little bit slower. It's not it's not a super heavy ski, but it's not touring weight light either. Right, exactly. Um, another question came through from Max. He's asking, how does the Fisher vacuum boot process work? Oh, I mean this this, this to me, I I've got a difficult foot to fit, so. I, I wasn't working for Fisher when vacuum came out, but I took note right away and I thought that is a really cool process. We've got a proprietary plastic that you can eat that, that, that molds at a, a fairly low temperature compared to, to, to a regular PU plastic. So the boot goes in an oven um, for X amount of time, depending on which model it is. You put your foot in it and then there's vacuum bags that go around it that suck that shell into your foot. So you get a completely custom fit out of that boot. It's That's it's nice really boot. cool, and it was a godsend for, for me. Uh, but even if you don't have a difficult foot to fit, it just gives you a more contoured, more custom fit than any other molding process out there. Okay. Yeah. I'll just talk about it. Um, Christian asked me another question over text about what we would recommend for a high school um, ski. We've got a really good option for high school racers that aren't looking for something that's fist compatible. It's the RCS All Ride. This is an affordable ski at $6.99 with binding. Um, really burly top sheet here. This is going to be great for people that are, you know, casually ski racing, not full on competitors. But if you're looking to get into it and have kind of a, a ski racing ski in your quiver, this All CS All Ride is a great option. Or if you're looking for a ski that turns really well, um, that CT ski that's behind Russian Mike is also a really great option. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this could be a great option for coaches as well. Either, either of these options would be great for coaches. Um, so yeah, that's the Fisher RCS um, All Ride Ski. Cool. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions come through. I just want to thank everybody for stopping by. Um, keep checking the Ski Racing Media Virtual Race Night page for more updates. Um, feel free to contact us through Instagram, Facebook. Give us a call. Um, always more than willing to help you guys out with anything. Um, as we mentioned, we are dedicated to the race community. Uh, Want to make sure that we're providing the best experience for everyone from skis to customer service. So I'm really proud of what we can offer you guys. And um, yeah, actually, we do have a couple more questions, so let's get to those. Um, can you talk about the different skis in the Curve series as all mountain carvers? Any changes to this year's line? So I'll let Mike talk a little bit more about this. So we don't have the Curve series anymore. We've got the RC1 series, and, and Mike can shed a little more light on the RC1 series. Yeah, the, 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 the RC1 is... Uh... Is, is really the all around ski for the piece. And, and the, the closest thing to curve would be the 86 GT, which is a little bit wider than the, than the curve GT. The curve GT was 80 underfoot and this is 86. And what we did with this ski is we basically, we used a race construction. It's got thicker tetanol than any of our other recreational skis. Um, it's got race, race, race thickness tetanol, which gives it much more, um, much more dampness, much more power underfoot. And this is the ski that won Ski Magazine test last year. And the, the interesting thing about it was it got gear of the year, but the interesting thing was that it scored the highest in stability and also the highest in, in, uh, in quickness and agility, which is those are polar opposites. You don't normally get those, but this is a really special ski that, that you can make quick slalom turns on or open it up and have great stability. So if you're looking for a, a, an all around ski um, that still has some race performance in it, that's a great direction to go. Yeah, great. And um, that ski is gonna be available as a system ski and also a flat ski this year. So a lot of different options on how you wanna mount that ski up and ride it. 
Yeah, and I, I'd also mention that there's there's a there's a narrow waisted ski. There's an 82 GT and then a 78. And the 82 is is also a, a, a really good ski for somebody that maybe doesn't want as 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 much power and wants a little bit more playfulness. That's a great direction to go. And then if if you're more focused on uh, on 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 hard snow, um, 78 underfoot is is a great option as well. <laughs> so we got a funny question here from Max. Max goes, my head is shaped like Mike Catrips. What softer helmet would fit best? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the Jack helmet. And, well, and well, does, does that mean it's shaped like mine or padded like mine? <laughs> I'm not sure. that's a different question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so folks who aren't familiar, if you're buying um, your first helmet over the internet, um, an, an easy way to measure a lot of these helmets are measured in centimeters. So just take a soft measuring tape and you're going to measure around the widest part of your head right above the uh, eyebrows and, and find a friend to help you read that reading. But yeah, you're looking for the centimeter number and then you can compare that against the size chart on UVEX's website or uh, at your local retailer. And, and if you're insulate, insulated like me too, Max, and I use a, a light liner under my helmet. <laughs> uh, one easy trick for measuring your, your helmet size is actually taking a string around your head and then laying it out and then measuring that. If yeah, you don't have a soft it, tape, that's a great it, idea. If right, you don't exactly. have a here. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, we'll give a, another couple seconds for questions here. Uh, if anybody has questions, make sure to get them out in that comment section below. Um, Tyler, what are you looking forward to most this season? Uh, I think it's going to be kind of a new season look with everything that's going on in the world. But you now snow is still going to fly, and we're going to, a lot of people are going to get out there and get excited because it's been cooped up. I haven't been able to ski since March, a lot of us. so. Uh, it's going to be an exciting year. I think I, the race season is going to be interesting. Uh, World Cup is going to be fun to watch, and it's going to be sweet. There's clearly a lot of energy out there. People are excited about skiing, um, and it's going to be a, an interesting resort experience for sure. Um, some of the busy resorts. I, I think with people working from home, hopefully they can take – Tuesday and Wednesday off and work on the weekends and go up midweek. Um, that'll help out. And then I think a lot of people are, are are toying with the idea of touring a little bit more too and and putting together a system like the one guy was asking for, like Christian was asking for, what can I ski at the resort, but I can also go walk walk in the in the backcountry with. So I think we're gonna see a lot of that as well. Yeah. To your point, Mike. A lot of my friends, you know, fathers, middle-aged guys, we're talking about setting up a, like a 102, maybe maybe even a 94 with a touring setup. For the first time, a lot of these guys are doing it. They're saying, hey, man, what do I need? What do I need to go uphill? Well, you don't need much. Yeah. <laughs> you need a binding that releases so you can go up. You need skins. And you need to have a reasonable mindset of what you're looking for out of that day. Are you going to get one really good – what really great run are you going to hot lap so it's either a really light setup or it's a great setup for going downhill that's a lot of my friends are looking into it for the first time and it's getting really exciting yeah and if you live in the midwest or the east coast and you, you don't live near great touring conditions nordic skiing is a great option fisher is the number one nordic skiing brand worldwide i didn't realize it before i worked for fisher but buying a cross-country setup really isn't going to break the bank it's it's not the same price as like a full alpine setup so you can get set up with really good Nordic gear, skis, boots, bindings for right around 300 bucks. And then you can get around, explore your backyard, um, really go anywhere and enjoy the snow. I've, Nordic skiing has been a really fun new hobby for me since I started working at Fisher and really having a ton of fun getting out on the Nordic skis. Um, that, that's a great point. I think there's a, there's a lot of people that, you know, were itching to get outside and, and maybe they rediscovered biking or hiking or something like that in their, they're trying to figure out, okay, how do, how do I keep this going through the winter? I've got an hour to get out and exercise. I'm two hours from the, near, from the nearest ski area, so alpine skiing is an option. But there's a golf course or a field or a, a, a snow-covered forest service road that you can get out and get some exercise on. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of people gravitating that way as well. It's a great – I, I don't mind the gym, but – 
God, I hate cardio in the gym, and this is an awesome alternative to that. You don't have to go crazy like Tyler, though, and race a, what was it, 50K? <laughs> yeah, American Burka Binder. Burka Binder. It's <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> Tyler racing Alpine, racing Nordic. I think we had a comment up here earlier. Uh, where is it? It's a good one. Tyler Thies for Fisher President 2025. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where's the ballot? <laughs> how, about, how about U.S. President? <laughs> um, better be nice to Tyler in case he's my boss one day. That's right. <laughs> uh, a question from Tobias here. Any recommendations for a master's downhill skis? Get a downhill ski. <laughs> a full gas. <laughs> Yeah, really, the option is the downhill ski that we offer, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Also, full World Cup, full gas. So, also, you would go women's length, women's length. down. <laughs> there's, 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 there's a, there's a lot of downhill skis too that are out there um, that aren't this legal anymore, but I think sure. you can still use them for masters. So, getting one from a really good World Cup racer or even a good fist racer would be awesome too. Uh, to your point, Tyler, a lot of those skis yeah. have been run in. They've been waxed thousands of times in some cases. They're actually faster than some of the new skis out there, but that's just because they've been run through cycles and skied on. And it, It's a really good option if you don't have to be this legal because they mm -hmm. keep changing that on us. <laughs> good question. Awesome. Um, get your last minute questions in. Um, anything that you guys want to add in? What are you looking forward to this season, Mike? Well, like I said, I'm just I'm looking forward to getting on snow. Like a lot of people, uh, the, I, I'm pretty enthusiastic about it. I, I did some ski touring when all the resorts closed, so I got a little bit of skiing in. But that's that's not the same as uh, lapping lapping chairlifts. So uh, I'm 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 really looking forward to it, and it, it's going to be an interesting year. But I think we're still going to have a good year. It looks like La Nina is developing too. So I think we're going to have some good snowfall and, uh, um, and snow will trump everything. Right. I mean, if we get, if we get snow, yeah, people are going to go. Snow trumps all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and make sure you stay tuned to Fisher's social media channels. We're Fisher ski on Instagram, Fisher ski on Facebook, fishersports.com. Mike and I are going to be working on content this year from our athletes from H headquarters. Sorry. Um, we're going to provide you guys with a bunch of content from Mike's backyard in Sun Valley, from our backyard here in the East coast and a lot of catch ups with our athletes around the globe. So excited about um, this opportunity this year to, travel a little bit less, but also provide you guys with a lot more content over the internet. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting season and, and a new kind of new experience for everyone. So really excited on the opportunities that we will have this season. Brian, what are you looking forward to this winter? Uh, getting out there. I Years ago before, uh, you know, when I was out in Utah, I used to film my buddies skiing around. So looking forward to getting behind the camera again this year and and producing some edits for Fisher, hanging out with some Fisher athletes, and uh, yeah, checking out some good spots here in the U.S. I don't know if I'll be flying, but maybe maybe a road trip out west this year. It's gonna be a road trip year for sure. Maybe Fisher can pony up for a nice Sprinter van. <laughs> Mike's got the Sprinter van. I got the Dodge Durango locked and ready to go. <laughs> you can sleep in that thing. No big deal. Sure, I got my uh, Yakima rooftop tent ready to go. Might get a little cold. Today, but <laughs> uh, it will be fun. Well, great. I haven't seen too many questions come across. That was a, a great 45 minute session. Um, as I mentioned before, always open to questions. So feel free to DM us, uh, send us an email, give us a phone call. Um, you can type in the comments um, after this video is over. We're going to be monitoring um, the ski racing media page. So if you're watching this recorded and you have any questions, feel free to type those below and someone from Fisher will reach out to you and answer your questions. And again, everything we talked about tonight is posted on Ski Racing Media's virtual race night page. So use that as a resource to get all the information you need um, for a great race season this winter. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Um, thank you to Tyler Thies for joining us, Rush Hawkins and Mike Hattrick from Sun Valley. Um, this was a great, great time with you guys and uh, can't wait to do another live stream with you all.
Thanks for putting it all together, Brian, Thanks. and Ski Racing Media. It's super fun. Awesome. Great, everyone. Thank you, and have a great winter. We'll see you out there. Wear your mask. Wear your mask, for sure. <laughs> see you guys. Sure.